Hello everyone, Santa Duck 2, and welcome to another mod overview, this time on Survival Utilities, a mod that adds additional blocks, items, tools, enchantments, and other things such as food. So, we'll go into some of the tools as well as some of the blocks, and we'll end off on the enchantments. So, you've got the bricks, which are obviously red bricks, which is bricks surrounded by rose red dye, and you've also got the dull one, which is surrounded by bone meal. And then you can use these for stairs, slabs, or any other types of things that come up for mod support. Like so. You've got the rope ladder, which allows you to have a ladder that hangs from blocks, which is made like so. So just take out the stick there and put string. And uh, yeah, allows you to climb up and down without the need of having another block behind it. Uh, from what I've come across though, you do need to actually have it where you attach it down. I've not actually come across it where you can easily place it and then it'll drop the rest. So I'm assuming you'll still need to work out a way getting these to work from a certain height in one way or another. Because it's not going to auto-fill everything. Just placing letters with another also we're just going to try and place them it seems. So yeah. Otherwise you've got the flint shard which you can use to make things such as string, seeds, flint spikes, a flint throwing knife, flint itself, or barbed arrows. So with the flint spikes you pretty much just put them on the ground and then stand over them and you'll take one to one and a half damage. Um, obviously you can break these and pick them up again. I don't think you need a tool. I should try about that. Yep, so you don't need a tool for them. You can just pick them up put them down, and you're good to go. Now you can upgrade them to a bear trap, like so, which will actually heal up for this, just in case. And when stepping into it, you can see it closes, and we get slowness for a few seconds. Otherwise, you can use a redstone signal to actually reopen it again, after it's been snapped, but if you actually break this you can't replace it, which I'll demonstrate now. So you stand in it, you can break it, and now it's in a snapped form, and it'll tell you that obviously you can use um, a redstone signal on place to unsnap it, but I haven't been able to replace it. So if you have possibly a way of doing that, I'd definitely recommend that, but otherwise you can't put it in a grid or do anything with it after you've gotten an item form. So if you have the resources, make sure obviously to make another one just in case you accidentally do this and do the other as possibly a guide, but otherwise best to keep it there and then just... Okay. And then just have a redstone signal nearby and you can reopen it again to avoid doing that and making a new one. Otherwise we have the sponge, which is made from a regular sponge and blaze powder or magma cream. You obviously use this to clear lava. You put this in water, you see nothing happens. We actually get some lava around here. Actually, see what happens and how large of an area it covers. I should get the nether because that'll actually make it much easier to demonstrate in a large area. So that's four. Some flint. And we'll go in and see. 
how wide of an area it actually covers for removing lava. Okay, so we're going to creative and we'll fly over to the area where it could be. There we go. Uh, let's see, we'll probably some cobble here just to work our way back. Okay, so we'll put this on the edge, and we'll just see how we go. So we'll place it here. You can see it takes out the following area of lava. So it makes things a lot easier for navigating in cave systems or in the nether to avoid certain lava amounts. So after you do that, you pretty much... I don't think you can smelt it. No, so you pretty much just get it used up, possibly. Um, or you're going to want to uncraft it. I don't think you can even use a bucket with it either. So, best to keep it very useful. Cool, we're placing lava. Placing water. Okay, I'm actually not sure if placing water. Obviously, in the overworld to do that, but uh, I'm assuming maybe you can just get rid of it with water instead of with a furnace. I we'll should try that. itself right after I place it. Put this in a 3x3. Three three. Put that there. And you just use water on it and it removes it. Interesting. So you can't get the lava out of it. Good to know. So it's pretty much almost like the furnace equivalent where you're just getting rid of it. You're not actually wanting to place it in a bucket and collect it. So yeah. Otherwise you've got certain tools such as a rake, which if you click it, you'll actually have the ability to get rid of footprints. As you can see, I've got on some dirt blocks here. And you can see a few other blocks that have footprints on them. So those such as sand, you can kind of see there, as well as red sand, and some dirt, and that's about it. So footprints will end up here, and you can get rid of them with a rake. I don't think there's a way to actually get rid of them, um, besides, obviously, breaking and placing the block, to actually get rid of them. Otherwise, as they sort of just leave an imprint on the block, or convert to a footprints sand block. So either just break the block itself, and then place it, or just use a rake to get rid of it if you don't want to do that. It does it in quite an area as well, possibly on the same level. So you've got that as an option. There's also the Observer Deactivator, which is made like so. And you can just right click that on the Observer to deactivate the Observer from doing its thing. So we just right click this, so you can see it's now deactivated, and it won't do anything. It won't actually send out a signal or anything at all. So if we Enable that, so you can see it's good, and deactivation means that it won't do anything anymore. So if you want to actually test something and you don't want the observer to do anything, you can then deactivate it, and you can work out what happened in the system. With the circuit or contraption. You've got the flip throwing knife, which is obviously made like so, and you pretty much just throw it. It does obviously have a cooldown for a few minutes. Uh, otherwise though, I don't think it gives off much damage on its own, it is only for throwing. So, best to use it as a projectile rather than a melee weapon. Otherwise, we have the Max, like so, which you can use for most blocks. And it's pretty much just an all-in-one. And if we just use it like so, you can see it operates pretty much like you'd expect with a shovel. An axe, you can get some logs here. You can actually try on a proper tree.
and wars. So we'll just get some of those. Just get some coal, some emerald, and lapis. Other than that, they should operate pretty much the same as a typical tool of the tier that they are. So we'll move on to the next one, which is the rotator, and made like so. And pretty much what it does allows you to rotate blocks. It does obviously have the following durability for these tools, you can see here. And pretty much what it allows you to do is rotate things. So you can rotate the ladder, you can rotate the stairs, certain other blocks, like the slab, it's not going to do anything. I don't know. It does waste durability, so be careful what you rotate. Um, but mostly suitable for things like stairs um, that have a rotatable benefit. I don't think it acts exactly the same as a debug stick, but it may just rotate things. So just do this with a door as well, and as well as a trapdoor. You can get an idea. You can see that it'll rotate things around like that. It's not going to rotate up or switch things vertically up and down, it's only just going to rotate things around the same block space. You've got the stream axe, which is made like so, and allows you to cut all logs with a single chop, so a lumbering axe of sorts. Let's go back to the trees over here. And you can see, like so, it'll break down all the log, or remove all the logs, but it'll leave the actual leaves behind. Otherwise, we have the hand plow, which allows you to do a 3x3 area of what a hoe can. So you're tilling a 3x3 land, as you can see there. So if you want an easy way to get 3x3 of land tilling and use up less durability from a hoe, you've got that as an option. I assume I'm just walking on the land. Oops, I'm jumping um, You've got the proven shovel, which allows you to dig gravel with a guarantee of getting flint, which is an iron block and sticks. We'll just get some gravel. We'll see how accurate it is to getting flint. Okay, so giving you flint shards as well, not just regular flint. So you can then obviously use that to make regular flint. Otherwise, we have the sickle, which allows you to cut plants and leaves in a large area and gather seeds from the grass. We just want to make it like so, and if we actually just use it, you can see it mostly gets the smaller rather than the double of the grass, and you get, I'm assuming, a chance of second wheat seed, possibly, besides the ability to clean the area. We use this on a tree as well, you can see large enough size of cutting away a good amount of the tree. Not the entire though, but a good amount. But you don't obviously get the blocks though, unlike with shears, but uh, if you want to clear out leaves pretty easily, then you can. Otherwise, we have 